Hello again, everyone. Lovely to, uh, to have you with us again this time as we continue our series, our series about our ancestors uh, in the faith. So we're going to talk about some of our ancestors in the faith uh, right now. You may remember way back uh, in September, we asked you guys to fill out a family tree, and I filled out my family tree. And so we're going to talk about some of my ancestors, but also some of the ancestors we have together um, as followers of Jesus Christ. Now, I suspect many of you know that this coming Wednesday is November the 11th, and I suspect you know that November the 11th is called Remembrance Day. Both Janice and I, of course, have poppies on, and many of you, I suspect, have been wearing poppies, or you certainly have seen people wearing poppies as well. And you remember that Remembrance Day is a day that we remember all the soldiers, all those who fought uh, to help defend and protect the lives of others, to defend and protect the lives who are being uh, people who are being hurt by by by, uh, by other nations and by other people. And so we remember those soldiers, those people who served uh, in times of war, and we especially remember those who served in times of war and gave up their lives. Now, I suspect that some of you, many of you may have people in your family, uh, members of your family who may have served in the military, in the army or the air force or the Navy. I, I know I certainly do it, do it as well. And I actually have a, some, a picture here of, these are three of my uncles. This man's name is Raymond, and this man's name is Ellis, and this man's name is Garnet. They all came from the th same family. They were three brothers, and they all served during the Second World War. And they are my uncles. They are my father's brothers. But even back before then, the Second World War was uh, back more than 70 years ago. But more than 100 years ago, we had what was called the First World War. And we had members of our family who served in that war as well. In fact, I have a picture of this man right here. That is a man named George, George Stockwell. He lived in Halifax and he signed up. In fact, we even have a copy of the, the piece of paper he signed when he signed up to be a soldier in the Canadian Expeditionary Force. Um, George Stockwell and, I don't have a picture, but his brother Thomas, also signed up as well. So there were two brothers who signed up during the First World War. So that was a long time ago on my side of the family. And you may remember um, uh, when we started off, I showed you some pictures of my ancestors and I showed you this picture of my grandfather. You may remember that. He also served uh, in the First World War. I don't have the picture of him when he was in uniform, like the other ones were in uniform, but he actually served in the British expeditionary force. So he served in another country, in another country's force, because he was from Great Britain. So those are members of my family who served in times of war, those who served in the military in times of war. And I think Jenna's has something to show you as well. This is just sort of interesting. I'll try to hold them up so you can see them. These would have belonged to my great grandfather, Ernest Case, and they would have been worn on his uh, uniform on Remembrance Day after he served in the First World War. So, as I say, I suspect many of you have uh, relatives, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, maybe great-grandmothers uh, who may have served in the military, maybe neighbors um, who have family members who served as well. And so lots of for, for us to remember on Remembrance Day as we stop for a little while and just give thanks for those who were prepared to serve to defend the lives of others. But today I want to talk not just about my family or Janice's family, but I also want to talk about our ancestors in the faith. And one of the ones that we want to talk about today is a, is a man who we also remember on November the 11th. So November the 11th is Remembrance Day for us, but it's also the day in which church, the church remembers a man named Martin. And the neat thing is, Martin was also a soldier. Martin lived, oh, a long time ago about 1,700 years ago. And he actually lived in Europe. Now, if I can get this book turned around, I have a really great map here. But I love maps. I don't know what you guys think about maps, but I absolutely love maps. And I'm going to try to get myself positioned in a way that I can see what I'm doing here. But he lived in Europe. So you can say this is Europe here. This is the Atlantic Ocean uh, here as well. And he lived, he was born in what a place which we now call Hungary. And he lived in Italy. And he lived in France. And so his, he was raised in a family where his father was a soldier as well. So his father was a soldier. And when he was 15, so not very old at all, he became a soldier as well. And he had a reputation for being very kind to people, taking care of those who were sick, taking care of those who needed help. 
And one day there was a story told about Martin. I have a neat picture here. This is a neat picture of Martin. You may recognize him. He's the one holding the sword. So this is Martin here, and he's holding the sword. And then we see another man in the picture here. And you can see from that picture that that man is not wearing very much clothing. And the story is told that one day on a very cold, bitter day, Martin was coming into the gates of a city called Emia in northern France. And he encountered this beggar uh, on this very cold day who was very poorly dressed. It was He was freezing. And most people coming in and most people going out were completely ignoring him, This it completely ignoring this beggar as if he were invisible. And Martin stopped and saw him. And Martin did something really amazing. And you're going to see a little bit of that in this picture. Because Martin decided that he wanted to help the beggar who was freezing on this cold winter day. So Martin took his sword, the sword that he would use as a soldier, and he took his cloak, the cloak that he had as a member of the army, the Roman army, the army of the Roman Empire, and he took his cloak and he cut his cloak in half. And he gave half to the beggar, so the beggar would be warm. And that was a, an amazing gift. He actually took something he had and shared it with this man who needed his help. Shortly afterwards, Martin was baptized and he became a follower of Jesus Christ. And later on, he became a bishop in the church and he helped teach people about Jesus and helped care for God's people in that way as well. So we remember Martin, who was a soldier and then uh, became a Christian after he helped this beggar. So I want Genesis has a little bit of a craft for you to work on for Remember Day, because Remember Day, remember, we remember the soldiers who fought um, to protect the lives of others, but we also remember one particular soldier who became a Christian, a follower of Jesus, a man named Martin. So this is really simple. We're going to make some poppies, see, with the stem in the center, and you can hang these up. You can put them in your window as a remembrance, or you can put them on your fridge so that you can remember, or you could hang one up in a bulletin board in your bedroom, and that can help you remember too. So we're going to go and we're going to get coffee filters. You guys all know how much I love to use coffee filters. Although you could just use a round piece of paper if you wanted to. So what I've done is I've drawn the center and I've colored it in with a black crayon. And then I have some red crayons. And you don't have to be neat for this. You can just sort of, it's hard to show you on the thing, but you're just going to rub your crayon on as fast as you can all around. You can make it all, I'll move it closer. It can be sort of messed up and, and whatnot. But it just sort of gives you the look of a petal. And then after you've done that, and you can use all kinds of different shades of red if you want. You're going to fold it in half. So you have a half circle. And then you're going to take that half circle and you're going to fold it again. Let me show you here. So you have sort of like a quarter circle like this. And then you just need to take some scissors and just trim the edges off a little bit. And you can be rough around the edges. So you don't have to treat them like a perfect line or anything. And that just sort of gives you that petal effect again. And then when you open it up, this one isn't all colored, but on this one, you can see how it's all colored. You sort of can see how it has petals to it. And then all I've done is I've taken some green construction paper and I've cut a strip. And again, you don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a straight line. It just has to be the strip. Just like that. And then glue stick on the top of the stick or on the top of your piece of green paper and then just sort of and you can kind of bunch it up a little bit too so it looks even more flower like you're going to stick your poppy in the center or your piece of paper in the center and then you're going to have a poppy and you can do a whole series of these you can put them along your window in the front so people can see you could put them like i said on your fridge as a remembrance on a bulletin board in your room you could do all kinds of things you could make them and take them to somebody else so Pretty simple, but lots of fun. Maybe Wednesday morning you might like to work on these on Remembrance Day. Yeah, that would be great. And put them up in your window so people going by can see that you're remembering the veterans. Now, I want to finish off with a story that Jesus told. It's a story that Jesus told um, about uh, himself. We could say, I'm going to read the story and we'll talk about the story. When the Son of Man comes in his glory with all his angels, he will sit on his royal throne. The people of all nations will be brought before him, and he will separate them as shepherds separate their sheep from their goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. 
Then the king will say to those on his right, My father has blessed you. Come and receive the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world was created. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. And when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. And when I was naked, you gave me clothes to wear. When I was sick, you took care of me. And when I was in jail, you visited me. Then the ones who please the Lord will ask, when did we give you something to eat or drink? When did we welcome you as a stranger or give you clothes to wear or visit you while you were sick or in jail? The king will answer, whenever you did it for any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you did it for me. So one of the amazing parts of the Martin story, the story of, of that soldier who cut his cloak in half and gave half to the beggar who had nothing to wear so the beggar wouldn't be freezing in the cold winter day. One of the neat parts of that story is that the night after Martin did that, he had a dream. And in the dream, he saw Jesus. And Jesus was somehow wearing the half of his cloak that he had given to the beggar. And so Martin realized that when he gave his, that half of his cloak to the beggar, he hadn't just given it to the beggar, he had, in effect, given it to Jesus himself. Just like that story that Jesus told, that when we give something to eat to the hungry, or something to drink to the thirsty, or we give something to wear for those who are naked, like Martin did, it's as if we're doing all those good things for Jesus himself. So we remember Remembrance Day, and we remember the soldiers who fought and defended the lives of others. And we remember St. Martin, the soldier who shared his cloak with a beggar and became a follower of Jesus and a bishop. When we remember all these things on Remembrance Day, one of the things for us to think about is this. Who are the people that maybe we can share with ourselves? Who are those who are hungry? or thirsty, or who are those who are sick? Who are the strangers that we might welcome? Who are the naked that we might help clothe? We've all been given many things. Martin had his sword and his cloak. We've all been given many things by God's grace and God's help. So how can we use those things to help those who need our help? So I want you to think about that this year on Remembrance Day. We have, I'm going to send something out to your folks um, with some really uh, neat kind of things to think about. One of the things uh, that sometimes ha happens on St. Martin's Day on November the 11th is that people make lanterns and then do a St. Martin's walk in the dark. So I'm going to send some uh, uh, video clips uh, to your folks just to uh, see if you want to make your own St. Martin's Day uh, lantern or Martin Mess lantern and maybe even organize your own St. Martin's uh, Day walk as well. And there's a really neat little video that tells a story about St. Martin. It tells it much better than I can tell the story. I'm going to send that link along as well. And of course, Janice has given you the craft that you might be able to uh, prepare for Remembrance Day as we remember and give thanks for all the soldiers who fought to help and defend the lives of others. So, St. Martin of Tours, he became a bishop in the city of Tours in France. St. Martin of Tours, one of our ancestors in the faith, one of those who were, was a soldier and a follower of Jesus Christ. So I invite you to learn more about St. Martin and hope that we, we can together think about how we can be like St. Martin to help those who need our help. Thank you very much, guys. Great to have you with us again this week. Look forward to having you join us again next week. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.